Alright, so now we're going to be taking a look at the isentropic relationships of uh, gases. And uh, we're going to be de deriving how two gases at different states can be related by an isentropic process. Uh, essentially, isentropic means that the process is completely reversible and that there is no heat transfer to the surroundings. Uh, so two equations that we're going to look at for deriving our relationship here is that we're going to take a look at internal energy which is related to the change in heat or the heat transfer in and out of the system minus the uh, work performed by the system and uh, what we need to notice in this first equation is that this is an adiabatic process that we're considering in order for it to be isentropic therefore there is no heat transfer so the change in internal energy for the system can only be equal to the negative of the change in work taken out of the system. Another way we can write this is that the change in internal energy plus the uh, pressure times the differential volume change of the system is equal to zero since we know that the work performed by the system is related as uh, pressure times the differential volume change given a system here with uh, some finite volume of uh, the work performed by that system. The uh, work would be related to the integral of the pressure times the differential volume change of the system uh, since pressure times area gives you a force and if the system's boundary is changing outwards or inwards that would be a force being applied over a distance on the surroundings. Uh, for deriving our isentropic relationships, another thing that we are going to be considering is uh, the entropy of the system. So dH, the differential change in entropy of the system, which is going to be equal to the uh, change in internal energy of the system, which I should write in differential form, plus uh, the differential change of pressure volume product. Uh, which is basically the uh, the boundary work plus the shaft work. That's going to be equal to the change in internal energy plus PdV plus VdP. And if we insert uh, what we have for the internal energy here, we know that uh, delta U plus PdV is equal to zero. Those terms just happen to occur right there. So those terms are zero, therefore the change in en enthalpy is going to be equal to just the shaft work, V dp. Uh, we know from the previous video that uh, enthalpy, dh, is uh, related directly to temperature in that uh, dh is also equal to the constant pressure heat capacity times the differential change in temperature. Uh, essentially we can then uh, plug this into our equation for a perfect gas and uh, say that Cp dt equals V dp. Uh, what we can uh, more importantly realize here is that this volume is related by the ideal gas laws PV equals RT such that V equals RT over P. And thus we can rearrange this equation CP DT equals RT DP over P and uh, divide both sides by the temperature we'll get CP over T DT equals R DP over P and uh, integrating this, uh, what we find is Cp ln of the temperature is equal to R ln of the pressure. And uh, this is essentially exactly what we need to derive the isentropic relationships of a gas that is undergoing an isentropic process from one state to another in that if we have uh, two states, we're integrating this from state 1 to state 2 we will have uh, Cp ln T1 minus Cp ln 
T2 being equal to R ln P1 minus R ln P2. Uh, basically, based on the laws of logarithms, we can then uh, rearrange this. Uh, we can then divide both sides by the constant pressure heat capacity if we want to get this in terms of just the temperature. So natural logarithm of T1 over T2 is equal to R over the constant pressure heat capacity times the natural logarithm of the pressure ratio. And uh, it's important to note that uh, Cp equals Cv plus R. Uh, therefore, R equals Cp minus Cv. And uh, thus, we have ln T1 over T2 equals Cp minus Cv over Cp times natural logarithm of P1 over P2. If we then take this to uh, the exponent E, we will get the ratio of temperatures T1 over T2 is equal to, and we'll have the uh, P1 over P2 to the power of 1 minus CV over CP. Now there's an interesting uh, ratio that's defined here. Uh, basically for, for calorically perfect gases we have a constant called gamma which is defined as the constant pressure heat coefficient over the constant volume heat coefficient. So for a calorically perfect gas if we can assume gamma to be constant or even between the uh, two states if gamma is relatively constant. So this is our temperature ratio which can now be rewritten as T1 over T2 is equal to the pressure ratio P1 over P2 raised to the power of 1 minus 1 over gamma. Uh, it's important to note that that is 1 over gamma since it is the constant volume heat capacity divided by the constant pressure heat capacity. Uh, if we were the two uh, write this out a little bit more completely, we will have T1 over T2 equals P1 over P2. Uh, that'll be raised to the power of gamma minus 1 over gamma. And that's for the uh, pressure ratios. Typically this will be written the other way around. You might have a uh, pressure ratio P1 over P2 is equal to your temperature ratio T1 over T2 to the power of gamma over gamma minus 1. Uh, you might have this in terms of specific volume, uh, in which case you would have PV equals RT. You would simply have to uh, rearrange these equations. Uh, basically this is going to be inverted. Uh, so P equals RT over specific volume. You would have uh, R T1 over R T2. It's going to be V2. This is going to be V1. It's essentially inverted. Equals T1 over T2 to the gamma over gamma minus 1. Uh, these R's are going to drop out. What you're going to get is you're going to get your specific volume ratio being equal to your temperature ratio T1 over T2 to the gamma over gamma minus 1 times uh, T1 over T2 to the power of negative 1 once you rearrange the equation uh, basically giving you sorry these are upside down which be V2 over V1 uh, therefore, V2 over V1 equals T1 over T2 the power of gamma minus gamma plus 1 over gamma minus 1 equals T1 over T2 
to the 1 over gamma minus 1. So essentially you can just relate these isentropic uh, relationships for a gas. Once you know one of them you can pretty much derive the others. This is used extensively in uh, compressible flows, especially at uh, high Mach numbers uh, where you're uh, relating a pressure with a total pressure to uh, basically calculate uh, certain properties of the flow in isentropic flow. Uh, so basically we're just going to write down the isentropic relationships that we've derived here. We're going to have uh, T1 over T2 which is equal to P1 over P2 to the gamma minus 1 over gamma. We're also going to have P1 over P2 equal to T1 over T2 to the gamma over gamma minus 1. Uh, we're also going to have the uh, specific volume ratios V2 over V1 equals T1 over T2 to the 1 over gamma minus 1. And again, these can continue to be derived using the uh, ideal gas laws for a calorically perfect gas. And those are the uh, isentropic relations derived for pressure, temperature, and specific volume.